Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Drums and Drams. My name is Cameron and in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the 10th release in the William Heaven Hill series from, of course, the Heaven Hill Distillery. Now, I believe this is a distillery-only limited series that they do. If it does get some light distribution elsewhere, let me know in the comments below, but I'm not entirely sure about that. Either way, I feel like when I see most of my friends picking up this William Heaven Hill 17, it's usually either A, they live in Kentucky and it's in their backyard, or B, they've taken a trip to Kentucky, they've decided to wait in line early in the morning at Heaven Hill in the hopes of something dropping, and then lo and behold, they are releasing the William Heaven Hill 17, which has been kind of squeaking out at the distillery here and there over the last several months. So 17 years old, a small batch product, bottled at 120 proof. I don't believe that's actually barrel proof. I think it was cut down to 120. Uh, this is a 32 barrel blend from what I found online of barrels aged in warehouse 1G on the first floor. And that's important because when you think about, you know, barrel location in a Rick house, first floor means that this might be um, a, a little bit of a softer oak profile. Uh, usually when you go up uh, in height in those Rick houses, up in elevation, you tend to find more intense oak presence in the whiskeys. And when you're talking a 17 year old product like this, you, you might want to be pulling from lower floors so that a, you have a lot of whiskey left in the barrel, and B, uh, maybe the, the oak tannins and that impact are just a little bit lessened. Now, with that said, because this is 275 bucks uh, pre-tax, this is an expensive bottle. It's premium bourbon. I don't have my hands on one just yet, so I have to say thank you to a very generous member of the Drums and Drams Patreon community, Philip B, for sending me this sample so I'm able to review it for all of you today. There will be a review forthcoming uh, for the Heaven Hill 18 year, which I have on the table here in front of me. And there's also going to be a blind flight comparison between this William Heaven Hill uh, 17, the Heaven Hill 17, and the Heaven Hill 18. That's gonna be coming up in the next few days here on the channel, so stay tuned for that. But enough talking at the beginning of this video. If I missed anything, I'll try to you know catch it along the way, but I wanna go ahead and get this thing on the nose and on the palate and kind of figure this out. You know, this is an interesting series from Heaven Hill, the William Heaven Hill line. It's not released every year. You can go on their website, check out the last nine releases leading up to this 10th release. They've got cask strength. They've got single barrel, bottled and bond, small batch, all sorts of different things. And I've only ever heard, well, very positive stuff about this series. So let's check out the 17 year now on the nose and see what we get. So the first few words that come to mind, one, sweet, very, very sweet. Two, bright. This is actually a, a fairly bright light, almost uh, airy is a word that I would use with a lot of the sweet notes. But three, funky leather. There is a ton of funky leather in here. Some of the things that I just mentioned might seem a little contradictory and you're you're not wrong if that's kind of the the assumption or the conclusion that you're drawing from me saying that there are uh, contradictory elements in here. I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm just saying that this thing really spans a range of um, you know aromas on the nose. Yeah, I mean the the leather is jumping out at me so much. Let's go ahead and start from kind of the darker end of the spectrum, kind of those like base notes in the whiskey that are jumping out, and then we'll kind of work our way up to the lighter, sweeter ones. So yes, big, funky, aged leather notes, um, but it's still somehow drawn into balance with some of the lighter notes in here as well. Now, I also find a lot of chocolate on the nose. Yeah, quite a bit of chocolate and just a hint I mean, it's very, very slight, but as I'm as I'm focusing on the leather and the chocolate notes, these darker notes, there's just a hint of almost like this light plum note. I wanna say plum skin. That sounds so pretentious. I'm sorry about that, but that's what's coming to mind. And, and, and that kind of little bitter, tangy, almost you know slightly sour thing, that really does factor in with the funky kind of aged leather, aged oak notes that I'm talking about as well. But as we kind of work our way up in the whiskey and we get to those brighter notes, we have to talk about the the <laughs> the bouquet, the bouquet of um, uh, baking spices. God, that's insane. I, I don't even know if I'm going to post this video at this point, but there are so many baking spices in here. And I think 
were not hit over the head with any kind of like aggressive cinnamon or aggressive pepper, black pepper, white pepper, whatever. It's very, very rich, aromatic. And, and I would say like creamy is a great way to describe this on the nose, but I can't help at, at this point, but to feel like this is somewhat off profile for a, a Heaven Hill bourbon. I think in, in my mind, and I think in many of your minds as well, probably when you think aged, high proof, you know, uh, Heaven Hill bourbon, you're probably thinking about Elijah Craig barrel proof here. I mean, some people might go to larceny, but the age doesn't really make sense. I'm always thinking about Elijah Craig barrel proof. That's like a benchmark high proof. We get, you know, these days around 12 years old, not quite 12 sometimes, but that's the benchmark, right? And this profile is brighter than that. And it's 17 years old. So I think if you go into this with the expectation that this is going to be very dark, all oak, all, you know, extremely coffee, chocolate, it does have some of those notes, but they are counterbalanced, almost almost overbalanced, I would say, in some ways by some of these lighter, sweeter notes. And speaking of those lighter, sweeter notes, let's get into some of those now. So we talked about these aromatic baking spices. Um, let's go fruits next. I think in this case, there's a little bit of this like overripe peach note, um, maybe maybe a little bit of like a caramelized orange in here as well. And then finally, sitting beautifully on the top of this whiskey is an amazing kind of like vanilla icing. I mean, this, this is maybe my favorite part of the whiskey. I love the leather. I love the way that the age is coming through on those leather notes. But because the balance is a little bit more towards these brighter, sweeter notes, I'm focusing on them more. And because of that, this vanilla note is popping out so much to me. I think it smells great. I, I don't know that I, I don't know that I love this whiskey on the nose just because I think my expectations are a little skewed for what it is. But, um, you know, we're gonna taste it now. We're gonna see, we're gonna see how this thing does on the palate. I'm just, I'm a little torn. I think you guys can kind of get that, get that read off of me right now as well. I like it, but in some ways I'm like, look, 275 bucks, you know, plus tax. Is this really worth that price point? Is it really special enough to stand in line at the distillery for secondary is around 500 bucks for those people uh, who care about that kind of thing? I don't know yet. Let's get it on the palate now. Cheers. Well, it's pretty nice on the palate. Still though, still it's bright. Like, this is totally a different take for me on really, really highly aged Heaven Hill whiskey. Of course, I have the Heaven Hill 17 in my mind. I have some other highly aged products as well that I've tasted, you know, over the years. Various, like, older bottlings, Elijah Craig 23 years, stuff like that, which maybe is not the most fair comparison, but it's still a good data point to have in my head. And a lot of those products are super dark, super rich, very, very over-oaked in some ways, but I'm, I'm a sucker for oak. Yeah, this is this is just not that. Now, the palate experience on here, as I've been talking through it, it's enveloping. It lingers very well, long finish for sure. And I think it drinks pretty nicely in that way. There is a little bit of kind of almost youthful pop at the front of the palate for me. And that's not something that I would uh, expect for a 17-year Heaven Hill bourbon. Although again, because this is so stylistically different, I, I think maybe at this point I need to, to expect some of these uh, these variances that maybe are not, not things that I would expect from a whiskey like this. So back to the palate now, second sip. Yeah, front of the palate, this is like light, but very decadent, very rich vanilla, like can, or excuse me, not vanilla, caramel. I mean, there is a lot of vanilla in here, but it's like this light, decadent, rich candy bar caramel, almost like, you know, pulling apart a Carmelo and you see all that stringy caramel inside. There's a little bit of that sensation for me in front of the palate with that decadent vanilla note that I talked about on the nose that I can't help but fall in love with uh, in this whiskey. And then right after that, you get into some of those fruit elements, specifically that caramelized orange that's really prevalent on the palate. I would say for me, actually, on the palate, this whiskey is even more classic than the nose. Like, the nose 
super classic Kentucky bourbon on the lighter side, but with rich aged oak type notes. But the palate doesn't have as much of maybe that like overripe uh, fruit element that I was talking about. The palate just goes wholly into the the caramel notes, the vanilla notes, the baking spices, and the leather. And that that sounds like a lot of bland general notes. You're not wrong, but that's what this whiskey is. Just on the brighter side of things, I can't help but continue to say that because uh, I'm I'm just shocked at the profile on this. And I think for me, this maybe is just a testament to how much whiskey Heaven Hill has sitting around and, and how they can achieve these different profiles depending on where they pull the barrels from, at what age. This is not rocket science, right? But they clearly had, you know, 32 of these barrels on the first floor of warehouse uh, 1G. And those barrels, to me, feel like they're going to provide this, this lighter, sweeter, more approachable profile that, for me, I think I would consider to be an off-profile version of Heaven Hill, whereas maybe for other folks who have who have tasted more of this highly aged Heaven Hill, you know, modern day, let's say, maybe this is not so unusual. I'm not sure. So let me know in the comments what you think. If you've tried this or, you know, if you've tasted other highly aged Heaven Hill products, does my description line up with your expectations or does this sound kind of uh, as surprising to you as it feels to me right now? But let's do one final sip and then we're going to wrap this up. Look, there is nothing wrong with this whiskey. Absolutely fantastic stuff, but is it $275 good? For me, I don't think so. And considering the secondary price of $500, I just feel like this whiskey, while it is a unique experience, while it's a cool thing for collectors, of course, you know, if you're willing to spend that money, if you have no problem and you want to try a different uh, profile from Heaven Hill, you know, knock yourself out. It might be good for a certain demographic of, of, of people looking for this kind of whiskey, but I think by and large, is this something where, you know, you're used to drinking Elijah Craig Barrel Proof and you think this is going to take it to the next level of that kind of a profile and you're going to wait in line for it and, and overspend more than you would normally spend on, on bourbon in any given month? No, I don't think this is that kind of a whiskey for you. Now, the Heaven Hill 17 year, not the William Heaven Hill, uh, but the Heaven Hill 17, which is over on this side, yes, that bottle would check those boxes for you. But this one, to me, it just sits in this kind of weird middle ground. I I, I do really enjoy it. I don't love it enough to ever want to, to, to buy, you know, my own bottle of this. Spoiler alert, I do have one on the way for 500 bucks. Uh, I don't know how I'm feeling about it right now, but that's just the God's honest truth. Uh, let me know if you've tried this bottle. Good, not great, interesting, light, sweet, off profile. I don't know what to make of it. Let me know if you've tried it. Cheers. Thanks, guys. And I'll see you next time here on Drums and Drams.